Because you see, out there, there's a way to some of these things, but which actually is not the way of the Lord. And then there is the true riches which come from heaven. Now, like I said, if you are established in the true riches, you will not observe what the scripture calls lying vanities. You will know that you are blessed because you are blessed in the spirit. You see, you are blessed with the life of God. That is the source of all these things. So you will not allow the contradictions and the cares from without to shock this revelation. Verse 15, but that on the ground, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart. You notice this? Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Glory to God. You see, everything that you have heard from here, there is nothing that you have missed. Everything. There is absolutely nothing that you have missed. It says, Bring forth fruit with patience. You do not allow anything to try and contradict the fact that these things are actually already yours. Since they are planted somewhere where ownership actually is, and that is in your heart. You see, it says the most legit place is the place of the heart. Now, in other words, if you have something in your heart, it is permanent. It is yours. It cannot be taken away from you. It says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when it is there in your heart, it is there to stay. It surely will manifest. It surely will increase. It surely is yours. But you see, now it is one thing for you to be given something from without. And you know, there are people who, you hear people say, they fail into things. You see, they just fall into things. And because they've just fallen into things, these things are actually not in them. Those are the people whom you will find feeling uncomfortable and insecure about the level of life that they happen to now live in. You've met fellows who, you know, cannot live the kind of life that you think their finances should give them. This is because it is not something that they feel they deserve. It is not in their heart. They still feel they are as some sort of peasant somewhere. And so they just fall into things and then they cause a whole mess of themselves. They are a contradiction of what they apparently own. They are insecure about it. They can't enjoy it. They try to control people. That is because it didn't come from their heart. They don't feel they have a sense of ownership. Now, a lot of these fellows here that are in politics, the hidden fellows, are actually that way. And that is why they'll fight and try to grab this and grab. They are so insecure because it is not something that actually belongs to them. When something springs from your heart and materializes, you know that you have it. No one can take it away from you. It says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And this is how it was in the very beginning. There was that garden where all things that man needed were planted. And it says, tree of life also and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, if you understand that actually the Lord now plants that garden of all these things in your heart, you will know how it was in the beginning and how to get into that paradise of God, that garden of God, where all things are already sorted, are furnished and finished for you. I'm telling you this, that uh, whereas it was a physical garden where Adam found that all these things are in the spirit, all things in your heart, all these things have been set there for you to realize and to begin to enjoy them, experience them, appropriate them right there. But you see, if you think that they are lacking somewhere, if you think you do not have them, then you will actually live like you don't have them. First go to Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. It says, And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife and have eaten, so sometimes hearkening is the voice of wife is actually danger. Anyway, okay. And have eaten of the tree, you, you know, there are things that are taught by religion and they're not necessarily word of God. Eh? I will stop at that. Eh? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cast is the ground for your sake. Now you see, from henceforth, what happens to man in his heart who thinks of, in sorrow shall I toil to eat. And as he thinketh in his heart, because you see, his ground, which we saw is his heart, is already cast. It is estranged from the blessing of God. He says, Cast is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So a man who thinks like that, who is not living in that garden where God planted everything and told them, eat all these things, save the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So this here, you've got to be so keen about it. What is going on in your heart? Like what really is going on in your heart? You can from this moment, from this moment right here, begin to experience a life that is so full, so fulfilled, 
that you will not allow to cross over, to come out of the garden of God. I remember when the angel told me, the angel a few weeks ago, that you can come into this place any time that you will. And I realized that actually that place is the place of the heart. So you can imagine that from this moment on, that whatever is taking place in your heart, that you will know that if now I should start to think of things that are contrary to the comfort of the spirit, that so shall I be. Then you determine in your heart that from today, right now, right now, that is a presence of God that is moving in me because I am the temple of the Holy God. You see, you begin to actually feel that presence because it says, He shall walk in you, He shall move in you. You begin to know that this actually is. You're not there thinking, ah, these people talk about the praise of God, the voice of God. How, how do I hear the voice of God? There's a prophet who has asked me that how can he hear the voice of God? I said, You're a prophet and you're anyway. And he used to prophesy. You see, we, we, we hear mysteries sometimes, eh? and wonders and revelations, eh? you know. She said, so how have you been prophesied? You see, do not complicate the good life that the Spirit of God has called you into. You are actually in Him. In Him you live, in Him you move, in Him you have your being. No evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Don't walk around expecting someone might snatch your back. Shame. Goodness and mercy. She follow you all the days of your life. You know that tomorrow when you wake up, there's a good day that awaits you. There's a fulfilled day that awaits you. You see, and so shall the day after, and the day after, and the week after, and the month after. It's going to get better and better and better. Some of you have just said bye-bye to disease now. Glory to God. Now, we will want your testimony and we will stamp that in. Now you see, so that means you are not going to have that infirmity again. It is bye-bye. Don't think about it anymore. I'm telling you, your health is going to be more vibrant. You're going to be more full of life and strength. All those things you're experiencing that were dark in your life. Don't expect any at all. You're growing stronger and stronger. Do you know that you have an invisible mirror? And that invisible mirror, you can actually become that which other people are yet to see. I'm talking even physical. You see, stop looking at yourself in the way that you think you don't feel good about yourself. I'm telling you that all things are I wish you knew what I'm talking about. I'm telling you this. Sometimes I don't think that you need a plastic surgery. But if you think you do, it can also happen. You are not limited by anything. You can look at yourself in that invisible mirror. And as you see yourself, you begin to become that way. If you set your face like a flint, I don't be moved by anything else. Now, I have just given you a very profound secret in the spirit. And these are the visions I was seeing of this kind of people. What manner of people are these? But you see how you become that one to the rest of the world and they're looking for solutions. And you tell them, here is something that I discovered. I have tested. Glory to God.